In an age of high fantasy, a Sumerian warrior spends his days praying at an altar in the desert. Conan's a descendant of the Atlanteans who recently lost his wife Valeria and answers only to his god Krom. A group of lesser warriors enter the arena and surround Conan and his thieving companion Malak, who decides to swallow all his valuables for safekeeping. Under orders from Queen Taramis and her lieutenant Bombata, the soldiers attempt to capture the two in nets but Conan easily defeats the weaker enemies. Malak's capable of defending himself to a lesser capacity but he's often relying on Conan's help and is easily captured. After cutting down another handful of men, Taramis finally realizes she's not capturing Conan and decides to recruit him instead. She asks that Conan perform a challenging task for her so he obviously declines, until using her magic she shows a visage of Valeria and claims that she can bring her back to him as payment. Conan and Malak return with the queen to her kingdom of Shady Tsar, where inside the crowded walls Conan gets spat on by a camel and knocks it unconscious, for his second animal KO of the film already. Inside the palace the queen has a group of mystics on standby and the two warriors have their every needs attended. During a private conversation, Taramis explains that her people worship the dreaming god Dagoth who appears as a basic man with a hole in his forehead. She gives Conan the task of escorting her niece to a wizard's tower and recovering a magical gemstone from within. They will then use it like a key to gain access to the gem-encrusted horn that was once in the forehead of the statue. Her niece Princess Jenna wakes from a nightmare on the eve of their journey but is put back to sleep by the sorceress. The queen then secretly tasks Bombata with killing Conan after they retrieve it, as well as making sure Jenna remains a virgin so that they may sacrifice her to Dagoth when she returns. The next morning they set out on their adventure and Jenna's already asking her bodyguard if he finds Conan attractive, then insults him by saying that she's never seen a real man before. Since they must face a wizard at the tower, Conan ignores the princess's directions and leads them to meet an old friend of his that will supply them with more firepower. Conan finds him about to be roasted by cannibals and charges in sword first. The majority of the savages scatter except for a few that he quickly dispatches of. After he's untied the friendly sorcerer, Akiro agrees to accompany his old friend on their quest for protection against the wizard. On their journey Jenna explains that she's the only one on earth who can touch the gemstone and anyone else is destroyed by it. They reach a small slum and find the villagers torturing an accused thief tied up to a post. Jenna asks Bombata to free her but he doesn't like thieves so she asks Conan to fulfill a side mission instead. He doesn't care about the slave but gives Zula a chance by cutting her free and riding off. The grateful warrior then beats the crap out of a few of her attackers, before casually stealing a horse as everyone's now too afraid to challenge her. With her metal headbutter she screams at the crowd then takes off to catch up to her rescuers. Asking to speak with Conan, Bombata tells Zula to leave so she pretends to ride away, then charges back knocking the unsuspecting Oaf off his horseback. The two scuffle for a bit before the group's leader approaches and allows the new member into the party, who says she's willing to lay down her life for Conan. After traveling over the mountains to the wizard's tower situated in the middle of a lake, we see that the magician Thoth Amun's been watching their journey from inside using the magical gem like a seer stone. They decide to make camp for the night and put down their guard for only a moment, so while they sleep the wizard turns into a giant bird made of smoke and flies across the lake. He scoops Jenna up and flies her back to the castle with the intention of using her ability to be able to touch the stone. In the morning the group notice her missing and with the help of Akiro's magic detect that she's inside the castle. Taking a small rowboat across they reach the rocky fortress Undercroft and use the magician's ability to locate an entrance beneath it. Always terrified of what's to come Malik intends to stay behind on lookout, but eventually tells himself that his friends need him and follows. The underwater passage leads to an opening that takes the four up a giant spiral staircase through the center of the tower. Though Thamon lays a trap for the team inside the Hall of Mirrors and waits behind one to observe. When Conan approaches the gemstone he's separated from the rest of the group and the curtains rise to expose the surrounding reflections. Akiro's magic's unaffected so the team are forced to watch as their leaders ambushed by red hooded figures who exit the mirrors. The cloaks combine into a single being called the Man-Ape and played by the same actor as his master. The mirror monster and the Sumerian do battle where the beast is the only one doing any damage as Conan's sword passes straight through it. During the fight Conan inadvertently smashes a mirror that harms the creature so it restrains him with a wrestling move. The barbarian breaks free and continues to smash the mirrors each leaving a gash across the ape man's flesh, which is what Malik says he would have done all along. It takes destroying every single one to finally bring the creature down and destroy it. With only two mirrors left, Conan can't remember which one his team's behind but makes the right choice and throws his sword at the other, impaling Tothamon straight through his torso. In a desperate attempt to survive the dying wizard grabs the stone but it destroys him just like everyone else that touches it. With the magician's curse broken the princess wakes up and Bombata's able to now smash the final mirror. 
The group rescues Jenna and rejoin with Conan where the monsters now turned into a pile of shattered glass. The princess is able to pick the stone up and puts it inside her guardian's bag when the castle begins to collapse around them. The team make it back to the boat and sail out the way they came in before the tower completely crumbles into the lake behind them. Now on their way to retrieve the horn from the next main story quest, a duo of the queen's elite soldiers try to kidnap Jenna but the team fight back. Zula kills one while Conan chases the other down and engages in a fight for the princess. The two hulking brutes battle on horseback and are evenly matched for strength, before tumbling off their mounts and taking it to the ground. The royal guard Togre engages in a showing of the warrior's favorite poses with Conan. Before continuing their sword fight, until Conan's speed eventually wins him the conflict when he cuts the worthy challenger down. Suddenly Bombata takes a swing at Conan but Jenna orders him to stop, so he pretends like he didn't just try to kill him and has no idea why his queen's men just attack them. That night the three recover with Malik trying to cop a feel when applying ointment to Zula. With the threat of getting his skull cracked open the sneaky thief walks away saying he just can't help some people. By now Conan's drunk and is slurring his speech while telling Jenna that he plans to remarry his resurrected wife when they return. The great warrior passes out so the princess asks Zula to train her to fight in hopes of winning over Conan. She agrees and uses her spear but the man himself stumbles over and swaps it out for his sword while calling Zula's weapon a toothpick. Jenna can't even lift the thing and when she drops it on Malik's head Conan deems her ready to take on any enemy, then walks face first into the wall that is Bombata and falls back to sleep. The next day as they're traveling, Jenna asks Zula what she does when she's attracted to a man but she says to take them by force. Searching for a more sensitive answer she asks Malik, but he realizes that she doesn't even know where babies come from and leaves it for another conversation. They reach a pass and are required to leave the horses behind to reach their destination, an abandoned mountain fortress containing the missing horn. Jenna leads them through the castle using Akiro's magic to light a torch and they descend deep inside. On the way down we see that the warrior Zul is deathly terrified of rats but still braves the journey. At the end they find a large engraved stone slab requiring both Conan and Bombata to put their muscles to good use. Malik slips underneath and locks it off allowing them to gain access to the chamber it contains, a large room housing a crypt shaped like a head much different than that of the Dagat statue in the palace. Akiro translates a prophecy carved on the wall and finds out the truth of their mission, that the princess is to be sacrificed and the horn used to awaken Dagat, who turned to stone after being defeated by another rival god and cast down to earth. He tries to warn Conan but it's too late as Jenna's already placed the stone in the key slot, sending the room red and gaining access to the shrine. She walks through fire and takes the jewel-encrusted horn while being surrounded by the corpses of what I guess to be cultists. After successfully retrieving the artifact Conan brushes Akiro's warning off a silly scribble on the wall, as he's blinded by his desire to resurrect his wife. The group prepare to leave after Malik swallows a few gems but are surrounded at the entrance by the keepers of the horn. Their leader wants it back and confirms with Akiro that it'll bring back the sleeping god to destroy the world, but Conan says enough talking and begins slaughtering the soldiers. The team help with Zula defending their flank and manages to kill a dozen or so before falling back to the relic room. Conan holds the troops off while Bombata attempts another sneaky kill on him by sealing the door but is too slow. The Sumerian ignores all these subtle attempts of homicide, and after Malik steals some more gems they're led by the princess into the giant head. The Keeper's leader is a magician and uses his powers to raise the stone slab and enter the chamber. He then uses it to follow them into the crypt but Akiro counters him and they begin a power struggle. Until eventually our boy magically pokes the leader in the eyes and seals the way behind the team. Again Bombata attempts to enact the Queen's orders by causing a cave-in, sealing everyone but the princess and himself inside who bash their way out the side of the tunnel. Jen is told that Conan will meet them at Shady's R and the two ride back to her mother's palace, where the mystics all stand around the Dagoth statue and gasp at the sight of the horn. Queen Taramis orders a ceremony for Dagoth's awakening, and gives her daughter a sedative hidden within a drink to keep her placid during the proceedings. As the ceremony begins, the Grand Vizier reminds the Queen that the moment their god shows signs of life there to kill her daughter. Conan and the remaining members of the group escape the caved-in tunnel and Conan finally realizes that the sorceress was never going to resurrect Valeria for him. He leads his party to Shady's R with Malik initially refusing to go due to their lack of any compensation, but follows out of loyalty and a bit of loneliness. He shows them a secret entrance into the palace that he says his cousin made when escaping the dungeon. It's since been barred off but the barbarian's able to bend them with his bare biceps and breach the palace. Inside Bombata waits for Conan alone and they begin their inevitable showdown. They're evenly matched for a long time but Conan begins slowly picking him apart taking out the leg and eventually stabbing Bami with his own knife. Then after landing the killing blow, Conan races off to join his team who's witnessing Jenna about to be sacrificed. 
The statue of Dagoth begins to resurrect so Taramis tells the Grand Vizier to kill her, but Zula hurls her spear the distance of the throne room impaling the Vizier and ending the ritual. Instead of returning as his beautiful self with all his powers, Dagoth returns as a monstrous creation in desperate need of sacrifice. The queen attempts to do it herself but before she can plunge the dagger into Jenna, a dual-wielding Conan enters and pushes Taramis into the mutated god. It impales her and tosses her body aside to begin its long battle with Conan the Barbarian. His attacks successfully damage the creature until it catches him and is about to crush Conan's head, when Zula impales it from behind with her spear. After some more success it catches Conan once again but this time he's saved by Malak's thrown dagger to the face. Just like the prophecy stated the longer Dagoth's alive the worse conditions get, and eventually a lightning storm begins destroying the castle around them. Since the monster was created by the Horn Akiro figures that removing it can destroy it. He tells Conan who's able to leap on Dagoth's back as it focuses the other attackers, and with his bare hands does the task impossible to anyone else of ripping a god's horn from its head. The god of sleeping grows weak and finally perishes when Conan finishes him with his sword off screen, then becomes the foot rest for the victorious Malik. When everyone's recovered, Jenna becomes the new queen of Shadizar and appoints Zula the head of her royal guard, with the approval of Conan who finds her oath to him fulfilled. She also gives Malik a position in the guard and takes Akiro on as her spiritual advisor. The queen offers for Conan to rule as king by her side but he refuses still in mourning for Valeria. She gives her savior a departing kiss before the hero leaves Shadizar in search of a kingdom of his own. He manages to find one and becomes King Conan. But that's another story. And the movie ends. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.